the city of Liverpool is home to Europe's oldest Chinese community. The Chinatown located next to Liverpool Cathedral and just walking distance from Albert Dock is the heartbeat of this Chinese community. However, when people think of Liverpool's Chinatown, they only think of this 100 meter stretch of Nelson Street from the Arch, which you can walk from one end to another in a couple of minutes. But Liverpool's real Chinatown is located in the streets behind it. The Liverpool China Bond grew nearly 200 years ago as the second city of the powerful British Empire. Long before planes and cars were invented, it was a sea trade that led to the establishment of a Chinese community within the city. The mighty East India Company, arguably the most powerful corporation the world has ever known, began the foray in the East after being formed in 1600. Starting in India, they expanded to Persian Gulf, China, Indonesia and elsewhere in Asia. They had total monopoly of China trade for more than 200 years. Finally, in 1834, after decades of effort, the British merchants succeeded in bringing this monopoly to an end through an act of parliament and now every merchant in Britain, not just traders from London, could make lucrative deals. For the first time, China was thrown open to private enterprise. Liverpool merchants were at the heart of this movement. The first vessel arrived in Liverpool direct from China in 1834 and Liverpool was allowed to enter the China trade in the early 1840s. Hong Kong, Shanghai and later Fuji were popular destinations for foreign ships to anchor to. Liverpool's link with these places strengthened further when the Americans entered the China trade. The Americans already had a regular contact with the port of Liverpool and Liverpool was fast becoming a rival to London in the China trade. The main trading goods were tea, silk and cotton wool. The explosion in the Chinese scouts population is down to one steamship line, the Ocean Steamship Company. This was founded in 1865 by two brothers, Alfred and Philip Holt of Liverpool, the sons of a wealthy Liverpool cotton broker. One of the company's branch was a famous shipping company called Blue Funnel Line, named after the trademark Blue Funnel. It ran the world's first regular long distance cargo line of service and traded with the Far East from 1866 establishing direct service between Europe and China. It ran line of steamers directly from Liverpool to China and led to the first wave of Chinese immigrants arriving in Liverpool in 1866. For over 100 years Blue Funnel Line was leading British shipping company trading to China hence it was also called the China Company in Merseyside. It's estimated that around 80% of Liverpool Chinese worked for Blue Funnel. Today, Shanghai is Liverpool's twin city. If you look at the old Shanghai Bund, it's almost a replica of Liverpool's skyline. Chinese sailors began settling in Liverpool close to the docks, firstly at Cleveland Square, then expanding to Upper Frederick Street and Pitt Street into boarding houses first opened by the whole shipping company to accommodate their workers. By 1890s, a strong Chinese community grew up in the area, settled and set up own shops, cafe, boarding houses, restaurants, laundry business to cater to the needs of their own. The new public house opened and became Britain's first and only Chinese pub. It was owned by an elderly Irish woman called Miss Jones who was quite the character. She ran it with her two sons. It was a favourite from 1940s amongst Chinese seafaring community, especially as in those days many restaurants didn't have alcohol licences, so diners would go to the new and have a drink before going to restaurants. It became well famous and was known throughout the maritime community. During the First World War, up to 6,000 Chinese seamen were in British Merchant Navy and around 1,500 of them were based in Liverpool. After the war, the Chinese community began to spread to the side streets around Pitt Street and Frederick Street. But in the 1930s, the area known as Chinatown began to be demolished as part of the council schemes to re replace the old courts and warehouses with modern buildings. 
During the Second World War, Liverpool was the most bombed city in England after London. The bombing destroyed much of Pitt Street and Cleveland Square and this quickened the demolition of the old Chinatown. The heavy casualties suffered during years of war led to British Merchant Navy recruiting sailors from its allies across the world, and thus Liverpool was turned into a reserve pool for Chinese and Indian merchant sailors. Some 15,000 to 20,000 Chinese sailors were registered in Liverpool, and thousands lost their lives during attacks from German submarines and as part of the British fleet. Liverpool was a seaport, so it was a cosmopolitan city with a lot of mixed people from all over the world. Talented people were recruited from all over the British Empire, spanning the whole globe, to help Britain achieve its success during the war. Chinese sailors and Indian sailors played an important role in Britain's victory in the war. Many sailors married local English women. During this time, Chinese community became more confident and ambitious and established new projects such as printing the first Chinese newspaper, opening a China bank, and a Chinese gospel mission. Chinese Seamen's Welfare Center was also set up in 1947 to help sailors, especially with gambling problem which was rife in those days. By now, the Chinese community also began spreading out of Chinatown and into other parts of Merseyside. Sadly, after the Second World War ended, the British Home Office teamed up with shipping companies and forced out over 1,300 Chinese seamen, some say up to 2,000 seamen, out of the country and back into China. It's believed the government's shameful act is due to the anxiety over opium dens. In Liverpool, for the three years between 1942 and 1945, there were 1,000 convictions for opium smoking, so Home Office took these steps to reduce the number of Chinese seamen in the city to pre-war levels. But the majority of the people were modern migrants, well-behaved, educated, peaceful, family men. But the government used the minority to stigmatize the whole Chinese population. Ironically, it was the East India Company formed by English Merton by a royal charter from Queen Elizabeth I which got China hooked onto opium. The company grew opium in India and illegally exported to China in exchange for luxury Chinese goods. At the same time, the shipping companies slashed wages and the local authorities wanted the housing that was occupied by the Chinese. The war had devastating effect on Britain's economy and infrastructure. Shipping lines were having a tough time and found it as a good opportunity to get rid of troublemakers. These were Chinese sailors, especially from Shanghai, who took part in a strike in 1942, demanding higher pay and bonuses for working in danger zone. Whole company and other shipping lines could not afford to, or didn't want to, continue employing the Chinese on these wages, so they made their life hard for them by cutting back their wages to pre-strike levels. Chinese men were taken by force behind their families' back, with the wife and children never knowing what they had left. Returning men suffered as they were considered communist and Shanghai at the time was controlled by nationalist forces. The chances are they would have been shot dead. Often the English women were labelled prostitutes as many chose not to marry their Chinese partners for fear of losing their British citizenship. Many wives went to their graves believing their husband had abandoned them and their kids. The fate of their children was also tragic in Liverpool, with many given to orphanages. Children grew up never knowing what their father looked like. Over the years, the Liverpool City Council has funded, contributed and or encouraged various projects as a mark of respect to the Chinese seamen in recognition of their contribution to the city. Among this is a memorial plaque in Pierhead in front of the Three Graces, unveiled in 2006. This plaque was a birthday gift funded by Charles Crowley, whose wife Yvonne is one of those Eurasian child whose Chinese dad was forced to leave the country behind their back. There's also a blue plaque on the outer wall of the new Capital restaurant next door to the new unveiled in 2013, which was the brainchild of husband and wife John Campbell and Moira Kenny, who are also recording the oral history of the Chinese community. In 2000, 
Chinese ceremony archway, also known as the Chinese Friendship Arch, was unveiled at the top of Nelson Street. This is a gift from Shanghai to symbolize the historical links between the two major cities. Standing approximately 13 and a half meter high, it's the largest Chinese archway in the world outside mainland China. It's made of wooden marble and shipped piece by piece in five 40 feet containers from Shanghai, then reconstructed by 10 craftsmen who came specially from Shanghai and were aided by local architectural firm Wilkinson, Hindol, Hal, Sol and Lloyd and construction company Daohai Limited. The archway is based on Feng Shui principles to protect Chinatown from evil and bring good luck and fortune to the area. A London census around 1851 showed there were only 78 Chinese-born residents in Liverpool. Today there's over 12,000, making it Liverpool's largest ethnic or minority group. The community is a hub of activities. Chinese scousers, young and old, male and female, are successful in all areas of life, be it academic, business, catering, retail, media or politics. They have gained national and international recognition and awards. Chinese scousers are building on the foundation of their elders and forging their own identity. Nearby city of Manchester may now have become the main base for Chinese outside of London, but Liverpool's Chinatown still has one thing which others will never have. History. Nearly 200 years of it. <laughs>